Shalom, shalom, Havarim, shalom. We're going to call this one that Kemet doesn't belong to black people today. We could say Kemet is not owned by black people today. And Kemet, we're speaking about the land, that Kemet. But speaking about the whole thing, the Smaitawi, Samatawi, or Mitzrayim, from a Hebrew, right? a Yehudi, a black Yehudi perspective. Kemet does not belong to black people today. See, some black folks like to say, well, you Hebrews and you Israelites and y'all talking about the Bible and being a black and a Hebrew or Israelite or anything, they don't really try to hear what we say we are, we, the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. But they say, okay, you're Hebrews, that's the Bible, but you're not a, you're not a Jew, you're not an Israelite because, because, because the uh, European Jews have the modern state of Israel. So if we're going to speak in so-called modernistic sort of terms, let's, let's be real. Let's keep it on the realismism, right? As they say, the realismism, you know, the real-ish. The real-ish is that modern Egypt, or what they call it, um, <laughs> you all want to call it Kemet, all right? It doesn't belong to black people. Yeah, I see the black people and Seti's tomb and all that and the different complexions and the Tama who, who are the Libyans, but some of y'all say is the white man, so forth and so on. He up to Bobby Hammond, still like his and love his works. But Kemet does not belong to black people. I could, I could say Kemet don't belong to African people because the modern people over there they're saying something different and all these people saying pro Kemet and Kemet is before the Bible and Kemet is our real culture. What are they doing to reclaim their land? All the art and facts and everything that they stole, all the grave robbing. You're celebrating the wrong thing because modern Kemet or Kemet today doesn't belong to black people. Kemet today doesn't belong to black people. I mean, the easiest proof right, is to look at nowadays. Right? Of course, we look at the history, we look at the wall painting, we see black people. But what do they tell um, Kevin Hart? <laughs> Remember the Kevin Hart situation? Where was the comedic community there? Notice how the comedic community said nothing. They, they said nothing. They was playing checkers, you know, and the modern Arab, Egyptians, whatever they are, you know, they basically was playing chess. And they just canceled that nigga. You know what I mean? And that nigga said what? I'm talking about Kevin Hart. He said what? Right? He was saying it's black people. It's black people. Right? He was going to go over there and, and, and do his comedian thing. Right? And, and they said, nah, 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 nah. They had a whole big campaign against Kevin Hart. Where was the pro-comedic community? Ones like Jabari and the rest of what? What, what is Sarnetta doing here? Sonnet didn't even address, he didn't even address the issue. None of them addressed, they're all pro kemetic and they're against the Bible and against the Hebrews and Israelites because everything in the Bible, they stole, they plagiarized out of it. And plagiarization is a law that the same so-called white man made up. The white man made up this whole plagiarization thing. Right. One thing I got to say is, who's, who's the guy? It was Garfield. He said something that I heard some professor say even before, but he brought it back to the conscious community that that stories to some degree have no border. Right. Stories don't have no border. You know what I mean? But Martin Kemet does not belong to black people. Now, we're not saying that the ancient people were not black and African people. What we're saying is if you try to say, well, look at the state of Israel today and the white Jews over there, they're the ones who's running it and look what they did. And you black people are faking it because all white people stuff. Well, let's look at ancient Egypt into the modern times. Ancient Egypt that was dead and buried. Ancient Egypt was dead and buried. You know what I'm saying? You're still talking about the curse of Ham. Curse of Ham. Curse, the curse of Ham is a lie. The curse of Ham or, or Kam or Kemet is a lie. It's a lie, 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 lie. It's not there, nowhere in the Bible. See, you listen to the white man. The white man give you a Bible, but then the white man tell you something. And even though you read something different in the Bible, you keep on going on on the white man's lie. Because <laughs> the white man is your daddy. You know, he must be your daddy. But the point of it being right here, here, here is that Kemet, Kemet, does not belong to black African people today. That's the fact of the matter. Yeah, most of these fakers, most of these fakers out there, the pro comedic the Sidonetta types, and so forth and so on, you know? The truth of the matter is the Bible, the Torah, the Pentateuch contain history, contain much history. 
In fact, Kemet, uh, not even it's, Kemetology is something that the niggers, you know, Negroes, they be saying that, you know, but but the, but they're not even studying it right because the ancient land was not really called Kemet. Kemet was a part of the land, the Tameri land, that land that came down from Ethiopia. You know, y'all they'll do better off talking about um, having tours to to Nubia. Right with the Sudanese black people, this is black African people, or to or to Ethiopia. But they all be going there, giving their money to the same so-called Martin. You could say Egyptian. Some say pale red Arabs, or whatever they want to call them. These mixed people over there who are part of the conquering people and everything. They go over there, give their money over there to have these people basically insult them to their face, and then they come over here and then they push this pro comedic. And he said, oh, the Greeks, the Greeks were some white boys and the Romans were white. But, but then at the same time, we have the evidence that they were black people. Even from the very beginning, they're on the wall paintings in ancient Kemet, as you call it. Right? The same melanated people from the same region that white people invaded like they did in Australia, like they did in South Africa, like they did in America, and they take over the place. We think they, they ain't nothing new, right? They ain't nothing new. So we're not saying that the ancient teaching was not black people, but there's a problem with the comedic community. You know what the problem is? That they're not, they're not like the Hebrews or black people say they're Hebrews and Israelites. At least they are confronting the ones who are claiming to be them or claiming what they claim to be their own. You don't see this among the comedic community. You know what I mean? I guess all that Book of the Dead, you know what I mean? What about right now in life? What are you doing right now in life? So we're going to talk about the ancients. Yeah, we know they were black people, right? We represent the teaching for, for years on this because it's a very important part of just the general black people's teaching. But also we got to teach the fullness of the truth, right? That that civilization was dead and buried. It was dead and buried before the white man resurrected it. And look at this. He resurrected and you see black people, you see black African faces. And yet they tell them to their face that, no, it's not black. It's not African. And then they go over to the very place where the children, the great, great, great grandchildren of the people who conquered and raped it will tell you to your face that it's not black. Uh, of course, you might find a couple of Marty Egyptian that say, yes, it's black. It's black. But they want to get your American dollars. Y'all don't get the game. What about the Nefertiti bus that was proven fake? How many of these comedics be talking about that? Right? What about Sarnetta? Do they ever talk about this right here? Or Jabari, the rest of them say, hey, look at this. To really check the false Egyptology that's going on, the whitewash Egyptology that's going out, and also to confront. If this is what they believe, they believe that they are not Hebrews, they're not Israel. We know they're Israelites. There's some laws, stubborn, hard-headed Israelites. If they're over here and they're part of this 400-year people, we know who they are, right? And I suspect they know who they are. But they're trying to choose the so-called easy way. They're trying to, you know, the shortcut. The shortcut makes a deep scar, right? Modern Egypt does not belong to black African people until black African people take it back and take back all their art and facts, Take back all the artifacts. Listen, here's the great thing about a lot of the artifacts they discover. They print these things. They they have different things go on in the media, the peer review, the academic papers and everything. So you can read it and study it, but you should still have a campaign for African and black people like yourselves, if you're pro-Kemetic, to reclaim your holy... Isn't that land your holy land? That's, that's continually being raped, and then you're going over there to participate in the rape and have people... Slammed the door on ones like Kevin Hart. And the whole comedic community was silent. But that wasn't so. Kyrie Irving. Remember the Kyrie Irving? You saw a Hebrew and Israelite people, even though my father's house has many mansions and there's different camps and different mansions. One thing you found with the Hebrew and the Israelite and everyone who ascribes more or less as black people to that, that they spoke up. You know, they got busy in social media. And some of the groups, whether the IU, IC, and we differ with them on, on many kind of things. But we recognize that, yeah, they're Hebrews, they're Israelites. We recognize that the foundation is one and the same. So even though we disagree, different Hebrews, Israelites, and royal order, Ethiopian. We say Ethiopian. A lot of them turn their back because they say, oh, that's African. Well, the Hebrew language is African. It's an Afro-Shemitic language. But there's a lot of different tribes and nations in Africa, ain't it? All right, so why is not the Hebrews and the African Israelites also one of those tribes? 
But that doesn't mean that because we are Israelites and therefore we who recognize we're African mean we're like every other tribe. I mean, you have black tribes fighting each other before the white man even come along. And for thousands of years, going all the way back to ancient Egypt when they was robbing the Nubians of their gold. They were robbing the Nubians of their gold. <laughs> See, that natural resources, some things are human conditions, right? And we talk about evil doing, well, we, it's the white man, nobody does it better, right? Than that, but still, the basic crux of the matter was going on even when it was black on black on blackity black back in the days. But Kemet does not... See. Kemet might belong to black people over here. If you do some stuff, you get a copyright or something because of the white man's government and you can do your own Kemetic thing. You can have your own Kemetic brand, so forth and so on. You can copyright or trademark your logo or surface mark your little saying or whatever else like that. Yeah, you can do that. But we're talking about the crux of the matter, the art and fact. When do you hear the Kemetics talking about all that stolen art and facts? They're more than happy to have the white man tell them what it is. Right? But when the white man says that it's white, okay, some of them will start to argue with the white man. It's black, it's black. But they miss the main fact that that's your land. Kemetics. If ancient Egypt, which is basically modern Egypt today, is your land, right? why are you going over there paying money to them right, to selectively show you? You know how much art and facts they dug up out of Egypt that they've never Never, ever shown the public? Kemet belongs to black so-called Kemetic people as much as Hollywood does. <laughs> Holly weird. You know, it's interesting they'll talk about the movies. Look at that. In the movie, they have a white man playing ancient Egyptian people. But you went and watched the movie. You might even like the movie. You might even have copies of it. You might have... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, but then you'll talk that talk. But what about the, the essence of it? The land. What about land? Right? Don't tell me about, oh, what about ancient Egyptian civilization? It's dead. It's dead. It was dead. It was dead. Along with the Book of the Dead, it was dead. Right? Oh, don't tell me about, oh, the Ten Commandments came from the 42, um, what do they call it? Commandments. It's not even commandments of Ma'at. They lie with that. It's not commandments of Ma'at. It was a negative confessions of Nebseni. So they even confused their own logic to try to make a point that the white man was the first one to make it. Who was the first one to say some shite like that? Right? It was Wallace Budge. Because you see, some white people, they may have been nominally Christian. They were Christian in name. Certain white folks that they were Egyptologists, they were Christian in name. But they were bucking against white man's Christianity too. So the whole argument about the Ten Commandments coming from the so-called 42 negative confessions of Nebseni, later on people will confuse the whole thing and say, oh, that's really Ma'at. But yet, can they find that? Can they show us that in writing or in stone somewhere where it really says that these are 42 commandments right, of Ma'at? Remember the language. A commandment is not a confession. A confession is not a testimony. See, in Torah, we have positive and negative commands. And we have positive and negative confessions. In the Torah, in the Torah, when we study it from our Afro, Afro, our Afro-Semitic, Shemitic roots, when we study the linguistic, we recognize they are positive and negative commands. They are positive and negative testimonies. So, if there is 42 Right. If there is 42 negative confessions. Right. <laughs> right. But this Torah, the Hebrew Bible right, and the Bible, even in the translation, has positive commands and negative commands. And you're saying that this was taken just from 42 negative commands. But then we counter, we tally it up. There's like something like 613. You see, something doesn't fit the lie. Right. Men lie. Movies lie. Walls don't lie. But who owns the walls? Who owns the walls? Right. See, here's the thing. They're not even they're not even fighting for Kemet. Right? They're off on some escapism. I'm not saying all oh, this, is not all, not all, not all. I know a lot of the pro Kemetic ones, they're going to be upset. You know, something going to be a little upset with this right here. Right? But I just have to really reveal to you the fact that that Kemet doesn't belong to black people slash Africans today.
and it doesn't belong because most pro-comedic people, blacks who are pro-black, pro-comedic, whatnot, you know, they are fighting against the Hebrews or the Israelites or people, black people believe in the Bible because you know what? In our history as black people, we did more to progress black people using the Bible with our own free heart and mind. See, it's that slave mass, that slave Bible y'all got to get away from. But it's not even the book. It's what's in your head. It's what's in your heart. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the point right there. This is hopefully to kind of prompt or inspire, you know, the pro-comedic um, pro community. Let's get off of this, you know, attacking those of us who speak about the Bible or being Hebrews or of the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews or any of the many mansion in my father's in the Bait, in the Bait Yisrael, among the Beta Israel in the Americas and the Caribbean. Yovas, because yes, in my father's house has many mansions, and even though there's different Israelites that might speak against Rastafari, may speak against I and I, Ethiopian Hebrew, Haile Selassie, they may speak against him, they may speak against this or that, but it's still a common denominator. You see what I'm saying? And even when one of us is attacked or what we believe is attacked, like the Kyrie William, the Kyrie Irving, excuse me, Kyrie Irving situation, one thing you find is that we spoke about it. When someone like Kevin Hart was attacked, right, for standing up for ancient Egypt or ancient Kemet being black and African, none of these guys said nothing. I remember I was checking out Sarnetta and the House of Consciousness. They, 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 there was not one, nothing on that. You know, they was talking about all, you know, they was doing, they was talking about Sarnetta and the rest of this goofy ass shit was all again, talking about the Hebrews, the Israelites, Hebrews, the Israelites, the Bible, why they believe the Bible, day after day, after day, after day, bringing on one like Jabari and others to do the same, regurgitate the same thing. I said, Chant, they must not know about the, the, the Kevin, the Kevin Hart thing. I mean, what these modern so-called Egyptians, the ones that basically own and control all of your comedic heritage and by extension a lot of our black people heritage african people you know we're not dismissing kemet we're not going to the, the you know some levels like to Zariak, you know what i mean but he's still right in Akron. when he say he, he thinks of it as garbage you know what i mean garbage vis-a-vis -vis by comparison to what we have in the torah in the scriptures in the bible and what we see our black people have done you know, over the years to free us up. And even back in the days, our people back in the 20s and even before that were not ignorant about ancient Egypt. They recognize, we can show you writings of our people who were Hebrew and Israelite and Ethiopian Hebrew inclined, you know, from going back to the 1800s that also understood that ancient Egypt was a black civilization. And this is before the overwhelming treasure trove of art and facts were raped out of the land and grave robbed. How many times do you hear them talk about grave robbers? You know, they're letting the white man and the Arabs go scot-free on that. And then they have the audacity, <laughs> the audacity to talk to a black Hebrew or Israelite and say, you're not an Israelite because the Jews, the white Jews are the Israelite. Cause look what they did to the state of Israel. Well, look what they're doing with your holy state, ancient Egypt, Kemet, and all the art and facts. You know, at least, at least, you know what I mean? We have communities over there. Even if they have to fight, one thing we know as black people, as real Israelite and real Yehudi and real Jews, we the black Jews, is we know about that fight, right? And, and even the other Jews, right, who are real, they respect that because they know that we know about this fight, right? And most of them even know that we are the Israelites. We go into the Talmud and, and the Mishnah and Sephora, and we find things like what they have in their, their, their Jewish and Hebrew and many of our Yehudites too. You know, let's not dismiss that a lot of what they have in their so-called Talmud just means uh, teaching. Talmud, you know what the Talmud is? The Talmud is like an encyclopedia, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Imagine if we collected all the different Hebrew, black Hebrew and Israelite doctrines on every single major point. We'll find a lot of differences. We'll find where some teachers might have contradicted each other. But they have a compendium, like an encyclopedia of most ancient teachings coming all the way to even some of the modern white Jewish teachings get caught up in there. But the thing about it, you can discern what's what. 
You know, so they'll tell you about the Talmud from a few things, but they don't want to tell you about some of the more, you know, abhorrent things that people don't want to, even Sadnetta don't want to talk about men and the penis ceremonies and the, you know, masturbation to the Nile and other kind of things that did go on, <laughs> right, from time to time in that glorious ancient civilization that ancient Egypt was. And you know what the Bible prophesied to? It prophesied that that great civilization because of his haughtiness, would be brought down exactly as it was brought down, right? And Kemet's resurrection must be credited, right, to the Bible. See, this is the this is this is the the Bible got the Kemetics in the catch twenty two. Even though they like to to regurgitate the plagiarism quotes, as I mentioned, these plagiarism quotes or these similarity quotes or parallelism quotes and other references were made by so-called white scholars, right, who had a problem with white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and white Christianity. Many of them, even Budge had certain issues, you know, with it. You know, that's why most of these ones were the ones who said those things, because they said, wait, they were taught by white people. Could they even understood that white people was taking some black people stuff and now dressing them as white people stuff. So they when they went into ancient Egypt, they started to use that against the white man's rhetoric. Gerald Macy was famous for that. Gerald Macy's writings. He already told them that it all basically comes out of inner Africa and Ethiopian Kush. But notice that a lot of the modern pro comedic black people out there. They're not very rooted in the roots of ancient Kemet, and that's Ethiopia. Why? Perhaps because of Ethiopia's Judaic, Jewish, Yehudi, black Jewish, that is, and also black Christian, you know, um, religious spirituality. You know, there's something wrong, something very wrong. But the fact is that Kemet today does not belong right, to any black or African people. It does not. It does not belong to us. You know what I mean? If somebody stole your homeland, you know, and ran your people out of the homeland and killed and murdered your people and then dug up all your ancient treasures and sold them and sell them and trade them around the world, you would think that part of the pro-comedic movement would be really about that. You would think that they would be keeping that regularly in front of the public, even if they promote whatever they're promoting, like now about Kemet and Kemet this and that, that they'll be promoting that. But none of them, you know why they don't do that? Because they be making little money. They're in bed with the enemy. They're in bed with the Zawahi Hawas. What's that guy? Zahi Hawa Hawa, whatever his name is. I don't give a <laughs> about his name. You know, you you know the one that be on all the Egyptian shows and everything and be trying to say that Kemet, they, they said that Egypt it's not Africa. It's not Africa. And then you got these foolish Negroes going over there, right, to to to, to gaze, right, at pyramids, right, that that don't belong to you. They could tell you to get your ass out, get get, get your ass away from here. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Now there's a somewhat of a symbiotic relationship because they need the American dollars. Think about it. Ain't modern Egypt. If it didn't have tourism, what does modern Egypt produce? What, dates or something like that? You know, I mean, what they produce? Dates or something like that? You know, that's what's so happy with Ethiopia grabbing, you know, the water. Yes, because the water comes from inner Africa. It comes from south to north. You know what I mean? And then threatening Ethiopia and the horn, the black horn of African nations. So if a war busts out between modern Egypt and the horn of Africa, where the root of ancient Egypt comes from, most of these pro comedics you know, get charged with treason because they still are going to be supporting, you know, in their escapism because they're not addressing the real issue that Kemet today does not belong to black people. They can talk this talk in the West. It only matters when they go over there and confront those in the East. They can't say the same thing about black Israelites and Hebrews and black Jews. We have, our ancestors have. I mean, even Dr. Ben wrote that book, right? And, and the way of him writing that book, We the Black Jews, a witness to the white Jewish race myth. Boom. Even him who was so pro-ancient Egypt and comedic, Right. Even he wrote a book to highlight the real movement. And I suggest that all you comedics that have read every book by Dr. Ben, take a time to study that. 
you know, and fall back from your, you know, your hate and your fighting, you know what I mean, of your Hebrew and your Israelite brothers, right? Because if anything really goes down, right, you're going to have to have the support, you know, of black Israel, for real, for real, you know what I mean, in reclaiming your land, because our people are on the front lines, you know, over there, over here, you know, the Kyrie Irving, right, wherever, on the front lines, all you're doing is just regurgitating some lies of the white man and in the cognitive dissonance, don't even recognize, wait, when we go over to, to, to Egypt today to look at ancient Egypt artifacts, all the stuff we're seeing, these people just stole it out the ground. These people disturbed ancient one's resting place. You know how serious that was? How do you think the ancient the people that a lot of these pro-Kemetics idolize and worship and, you know, like praise from, from ancient Egypt, the great leaders and everything. And, and, and ancient peoples who did some things good, bad and ugly, but they did some things good, yeah. But how do you think they would look at their graves being robbed and put on display and half of their artifacts over here and half their artifacts over there? And then one's trying to praise this, you know, instead of lamenting. Right? And lamenting their weakness. There obviously is nothing in the Book of the Dead or in ancient comedic stuff that tells them to, to fight to reclaim what is theirs. There obviously there's nothing like that. They can't find nothing. You know, we can find that in the Bible. Our ancestors, even during the times of chattel slavery, even found that in the Bible so much so that the white man didn't want no nigga, no black to read the Bible. You know, and he had to work hard on that slave Bible and these con artists, priests, um, um, pastors and preachers, right? Because even today, right, that same spirit from the beginning, you know, they say the white man gave us the Bible. No, they lie about that. The white man didn't want no niggas to have the Bible. Could we look at every revolutionary act, every progressive act of black people here in the Americas and the Caribbean? And one thing that you will find Right? You'll find that a lot of these great leaders right, used or believed in the principles that they found in the Bible. Right? And even many of them who even also praise ancient Egypt as a black African civilization, right? their operating system for black liberation found more inspiration right, in and through the Bible. Now, if y'all want to say the same thing is there for ancient Egypt, you're going to have to start writing, putting some books together. You know, how come none of them have put put like a, a type of a Bible together? You know, Patahotep, one of the oldest books. That's that's featherweight. That's really featherweight there. Put all these writings together, you know, so that we can then y'all can quote the Bible and say, well, look at the Bible over here and this book and that book and Old Testament, New Testament. Yeah, but when are y'all going to put something together for the community as well? Anyway, don't want to go off subject, you know, a little bit off subject right there. Didn't know what kind of like screenshots to really share. But the point still remaining true that Kemet, right, does not belong to black people, right? And all those pro-Kemetics, right, don't seem to have a, no type of liberation movement to liberate their art and facts, or to liberate their land, which the descendants of the invaders are saying basically never had nothing to do with black people. They only say black people were slaves. Oh, I could have I could have shown that. I'm showing some of the glorious wall paintings and and the recreation and the redrawings of some of the wall paintings. What I really should have showed you, you know, was what some of these modern Egyptians say about you pro comedic Negroes. You know, and still y'all take your monies and your American dollars and go over there, right, as a, like in your tourism, horrorism business, you know what I'm saying? Supporting, putting money in the backs of the people that would spit on you if they didn't want that dollar, that American dollar from, from you. And y'all should be ashamed of yourself after the Kevin Hart thing. You know, y'all did nothing. The majority of them said nothing, did nothing, even on their big pro comedic platforms like Sarnetta and House of Consciousness, the Garfield, all them basically did nothing. Maybe they did a little something and then they just went to sleep. You know what I mean? Went to sleep, waiting for the white man to dig them up and put them on display. 